This is the European edition of Breaking Banks, the world's number one fintech podcast and radio show. We bring you the European unicorn startups, founders, regulators and leaders innovating the rapidly evolving fintech scene today. A truly localized podcast with both English and local language content with some of the world's most well-known hosts and influencers in the fintech sector globally. Join us every week as we explore what makes the European Union a phenomenal proving ground for many of the fastest growing fintech plays in the world today. Okay, let's roll. Welcome everybody to Breaking Back Europe. This is episode 182. And today we're diving into the fascinating world of green blockchain. Um, what is green blockchain? We're gonna learn it in a second. We are privileged to have here uh, two distinguished guests with us. And uh, they are both uh, forefront leveraging blockchain technology to address some of the most suppressing environmental challenges. So green blockchain is not the whole community on blockchain. Green blockchain is the use of blockchain for the good of the planet. And there are many ways to use blockchain for this. We have Francisco Benedito, call it Fran. He's the CEO, uh, founder of Climate Trade. Climate Trade is a blockchain platform for carbon offsetting and having company to offset their carbon emission by directly purchasing carbon credits from projects that are focused on reducing, avoiding, or removing greenhouse gas emission. Now, every time we go in the airplane, we buy the ticket, there is the option to purchase the carbon credits. That's exactly what uh, this is all about, right? We also have with us uh, Yves uh, Carnazzo. Yves is a pivotal contributor at Access Impact. Uh, the CEO is a platform, uh, Access Impact, devoted to addressing the financial gap that impact the uh, economy. Access Impact has uh, uh, a suite of cutting edge technologies, such as blockchain, uh, job intelligence, IoT, and machine learning to fortify governance models and enable real-time monitoring. In the spirit of full transparency, I want to mention that I have the privilege of serving as the, in the expert board of Access Impact, contributing my insight as blockchain. So we are so excited to have uh, such guests uh, for our panel uh, with us today, and uh, looking forward to have a nice uh, discussion with insight uh, into blockchain and other technology. But uh, first of all, uh, let's give it as uh, two seconds to our guest uh, to say hello and uh, to introduce themselves uh, very fast. Uh, uh, Fran, hello, Fran, and welcome to Breaking Back Europe. Hello, Roberto. Thank you so much for the invitation. Very glad to be here. Um, as you know, I'm calling from, from Berlin now in the Green Tech Festival, which has been amazing here. Um, as you know, as you, as you said, I'm the CEO of Climate Trade. I come from a background in finance. So I've been working 15 years in the finance space and in technology since I was very young, since I was 16, when I created my first company in the tech space. And yeah, it's been my passion since I, I got in the in the climate space, and the climate tech space, um, putting different dots together and especially very worried about what was happening with our planet. So I thought that we could also apply technologies, new technologies to climate. And that's why we started Climate Coin in 2017, and then we follow up with uh, Climate Trade, which is today the, the startup that I'm leading. Fantastic. Uh, it's uh, amazing to have you here as well. Uh, let us know a little bit about you and Access Impact. Thank you for the invitation. A uh, pleasure also to be there. Um, I am based in Switzerland, and uh, I am a CEO of Access Impact, the collective action. Uh, my background is also in finance, but uh, now since uh, 2015, I try to move outside finance and bring uh, system thinking and regenerative thinking to, to better understand how we can help finance to move differently uh, about what they were doing so far on the inside of this planetary boundary. So this collective action is a five company bringing this solution and uh, we are based in Geneva and in the mountain Kromotana. Fantastic. It's interesting how yeah, you come from finance because money talks, right? When we can move things with money at the end to condition and we can see the changes on things. All right. So 
Let's start our rounds of questions. Uh, I start with uh, Francisco. As the CEO of a Climate Trader, how do you perceive the role of blockchain in enhancing transparency and efficiency in their carbon credit marketplace? And how is uh, Climate Trade using this technology? Well, carbon markets, when we started on uh, at the very beginning, uh, this is a market that, that was created back in 1997. So it's been uh, pretty much worked as a broker at OTC sector, 90% uh, still is OTC. So everything is doing by brokerage firms and trading firms worldwide. So then there, it generated some problems that uh, made it very, very inefficient in terms of what, it, what they call double counting, which is selling several times the same credit without uh, being canceled in a registry. So the accountability of that was was lacking. And there was that as well, that lack of transparency in terms of where your funds were going. Hey, are my funds going to the pocket of the broker? How much money is arriving to the developer? Can the developer generate more projects with the money I'm sending? Which is the, at the end, is the goal of the carbon markets is, is the a carbon credit. The goal is to fund projects as well. No. So one, one ton of CO2 is one carbon credit. So you are, you are reducing emissions. You are mitigating emissions, but you are supporting projects that do that, which is what we need. No, so we thought, why don't we introduce blockchain technology? We were experimenting with blockchain very early. Why don't we bring blockchain to disrupt this market, bring a marketplace, a platform that everyone can come in, see the projects, put the money directly. You know, in Spain we call it from the farm to the table. No, I mean avoiding intermediaries. And with blockchain, providing that transparency and traceability that allows the funds to be totally transparent where the money is going, recording it in a blockchain. At the end, you know that, uh, well, decentralized, immutable. And and yeah, that was our our thought. That's why we got a recognition of the UN in 2018 as, as the, great, the best solution for climate markets. And we came up with that marketplace that at the end became climate trade. And that some of the biggest companies in Spain and now in Europe are using to to buy carbon credits and other environmental assets like biodiversity, plastics. We we sell plastics, we sell as well plastic credits, we sell energy and, and many other things. No? So yeah, that's that's how we use blockchain. We we are mainly a, a, we use it as a, a recording of transactions in order to prove that transparency. Several transactions, not only uh, the pure transaction itself, no, several things that happen in the marketplace. It is not an on-chain uh, carbon credits platform. That's that's another another venture that we have with Climate Coin. It is more a let's say 2.5 version of of this, no. And uh, yeah, that's that's what they do. It's very it's very interesting. In fact, the blockchain does this work of uh, recording data, being transparent uh, and being immutable. So uh, is a very good use case. The same way uh, is, could you discuss how Access Impact is working towards its mission of bridging the financing gap and maintaining trust and transparency and sharing any particular challenges that you have encountered in the yeah. So I think the challenge is, is always uh, to, to change uh, the mindset and the mental model behind it and understanding. I think the, the big challenge is anywhere is to change the mental model. but. Uh, when we decided to create this collective action, we wanted to bring five governance on the, and this five governance as a, the infrastructure. And we decided to go, but with the permission blockchain for many reasons, we can discuss in, in it. But one, of course, at this stage was probably the, the, the energy evolves, the stable coin issues, the speculation of the token. And what we wanted is to be in the B2B area, connecting three main users, is project developer, investor, and emitter. And what we wanted is to give this distributed trust by design. So we choose um, a, a companies that was doing smart contract on eco mobility for the for the French government and using hyperledger fabrics. So it was easy for us to have this trust among uh, the infrastructure. The second one was not in the order, but it was interesting the regulation finding a partner that was in, in discussion with government, especially the, the carbon, but it's moving in all area per agreement, biodiversity. So understanding the regulation. The third, the third one was to understand the, the, the data, the connectivity, I, IoT, data, machine learning, expert knowledge, whatever we have to connect. The fourth one was communication, and the fifth was finance. And in this case, the finance was the bridge, of course, the bridge between the positive, so in innovation or project of innovation and impact, and the more negatives that want to reduce 
bringing this double integrity, the transparency from the, from the two sides of the coin, an investor connecting both with early stage. And what is was important for early stage investor is to find one way to reduce the risk of the project. So there is many dimensions, but one, of course, the blockchain reducing the asymmetry of information was a key solution because we, we are focused in the primary market to start from the beginning of a project up to a validation, agnostic of the validation by itself. If in term of term of, of carbon, it could be whatever the voluntary or the regulated market. But not only focusing on uh, on carbon with what we call the impact unit, which is a more holistic multi-protocol solution we can bring as a protocol, not only carbon, it could be SDG, biodiversity, water, whatever people want in this context by creating this multi-protocol, multi-impact unit, we create a portfolio of this impact unit. On what is exchange is the delta of that. If it's a carbon, it could be insetting, offsetting, whatever it is, that's a, and what we bring is the early stage investor in blended solution connecting whatever financial instruments they want on the blockchain gives this trust very early stage. Very powerful and interesting. In fact, the, there are many aspects of trust in the whole mechanics because it's not just for somebody to say, hey, this is the guy, there is a, the assessment about it. In fact, Francisco, can you provide insight on how climate trade, for example, assess the impact of the projects and there is any particular metrics or a particular notebook event you can share and um, maybe related mostly in the US base uh, or uh, or everywhere internationally. So how do we know the actual uh, impact that this project has? Well, at the end, um, whenever you get you get into with the with the carbon project, the carbon markets, uh, every project has uh, intangibles, no? They have intangibles that at the end is uh, what define Every carbon project it is certified. The ones we, we work with normally and traditionally are projects that are have a PDD, which is a, the, it is a written project uh, that defines what you are going to do there. That applies a methodology that defines why you are, let's say, accredita- accrediting that you have carbon credits, why you are reducing or why you're mitigating or uh, eliminating CO2. And that's what you certify, and then you verify with a register, and and then you validate those credits, you register them, and you can sell them, right? As a project developer, so that already has some uh, search of credibility. So then we see things that happened recently in the media, you know, that are accrediting credits that were not uh, like valid or more credits than than the project should be validating, right? So the impact is necessary to, because when we put money at work here is by for generating impact, no? If not, it doesn't make sense, right? So every project has some intangibles. That intangible notes that you have to, uh, to count uh, today, it is more a uh, thing, a tool of experience. It is more a thing that the people that do an extra due diligence on those projects that we, bring to our marketplace that get in touch with that those developers and obviously there are coming new technologies you have ai you have now new companies that are coming with uh, ratings and doing certain things but the, the state of the art is still i would say is still very early no in terms of of proving that you can bring different touch points of what a project is more impactful than others uh, you have the concept of additionality, obviously, that is the basic one. But at the end, after that, you need to know, hey, which is more impactful? Is it a project in Germany or a project in one part of the of the world where you can generate more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, more impact by generating more good? No, Imagine that you are doing something with water in Africa, places where they don't have access to pure water or to clean water, and you are doing similar similar thing in Germany where they don't have that problem. Now, obviously, the other one is more impactful than that. So, but there is not a clear today guide on, like say, a public guide that can say, hey, we can use this and we can define if this project is more and less impactful, no? We have some notes and some ex- the experience that we can apply there. And at some point, there will be companies more and more developed and cheaper as well, because the current ones, uh, sometimes you can't use them because they are so expensive that uh, that, let's say, uh, rating that they give you, uh, it, it blows up all the 
margins that you have to be able to have your own margins as a company, right? So we need to to use new tools, new technologies as well, uh, progressively to get to get um, more rating of that impact that we are providing. For me, it's basic that the credits are uh, obviously uh, every step of the road has to be independent. And that's something that for me, there are different institutions or, uh, involved, guarantees at least, uh, uh, that independency guarantees at least uh, the reputation of some of the projects. Okay. Uh, it's important. In fact, there are different aspects of trust. You know, only blockchain can solve, right? So there is, in effect, uh, also the capacity to evaluate and to trust the project in a particular respect. Do you have a take, particular take on this, uh, if you want to share? So when we when in a sense, we are not uh, what we design as a as a platform. We, we we call it a dedicated habitat because we are multi-layer solution that is context-based for some multi-stakeholders that want to build it. So in a sense, the value is built around the multi-stakeholder. And the multi-stakeholder could be small or larger according to the project by itself. So the value is def defined inside the value creation in the primary market of the impact unit. If it's a carbon, of course, the carbon, there is a market price for the carbon and that's a, the, the versus private or voluntary or the regulated market on what the true price of carbon is something that should be done around the planetary boundary. What, what we want is to achieve an outcome-based solution. So what every step to, to validate one impact unit, which could be a credit carbon, should be designed by the stakeholder on the methodology implemented and validated by the blockchain by itself. So every action as a, inside a smart contract is validated. It could be a, a, a ranger taking a picture, it could be a, pix, a, a satellite image, it could be a validation by expert on demand. Then since the value is created by the multi-stakeholder or multi-protocol multi approach, and what we want is to bring early stage people like co-developer, like emitter or investor or private public partnership to validate together the value created. Of course, some are more monetized and some are more manageable. So in a sense, the, the, and the blockchain, gives this trust value early stage and implement every step and who is the validation of every step uh, from starting from scratch up to the impact it generated. Okay, because it's not really a binary thing. It's not it's a value project, it's not a value project. It can be like a range of, uh, if uh, I turn off the light uh, in my apartment when I go out for dinner, how can I value those credits that I generate by saving the little bit of electricity? Probably... My impact is so small that the cost to evaluate the quality. If I change the light bulb and I put a light bulb, light bulb rather than a normal one, uh, how I can measure this? The measurement of it will be so expensive, it doesn't make even sense to start measuring it. So there must be a level of a methodology. And utopically, in the future, each small light bulb can send via internet the saving that it has generated. So my full apartment can be part of the system. But the, there must be an effect today, a methodology that uh, has its limit. As Francisco was noticing before, it costs so much that it doesn't make sense even to go start evaluating certain things. Uh, maybe I can take this one on. What we have, we have a sandbox, a lab, and in this lab, we align the stakeholder, we align the eligibility, and we align how far we want to, with, to go with the technology. What how we want to use the, the technology, especially the blockchain, is to norms just the steps that give the distributed trust by design inside this multi-stakeholder approach. So in a sense, but we can also use crowdsourcing and the crowdsourcing could be local action. We don't have to put everything every time the technology, but as it's distributed by design, there is more resilience inside the process. And we have to define, and if we do it for a farm, then it's maybe not eligible to, to use an habitat or a multi-layer web management system. But if we can put at scale to, to 30,000, there is economic scale. So in a sense, it's, it's, it's always a, a energy matters on information on the entropy that you want to design inside your habitat and what you have to exchange by people who need to bring more information or flow of money inside this dedicated habitat. So it's something that it should be designed uh, inside the sandbox. And for some projects, it's not eligible, as you mentioned, because uh, the cost to validate is above the cost and you have to trust the local actors that is doing well. That's the cook that makes sense. Uh, friend, um... What do you identify as the major challenges and opportunities for uh, climate trade uh, and the broader integration of blockchain in the climate sector? Are you planning to navigate these challenges and exploit these opportunities? Well, uh, 
always uh, blockchain has been evolving a, a lot in terms of especially proof proof of work to proof of stake so we've been switching as as we started uh, uh, we were we were in 2018 working with in ethereum then we moved to to stellar which was a uh, cheaper in, in that transaction uh, based platform and then we moved to algorand which we helped them and we worked with them to create an algorithm to make every transaction uh, carbon neutral, you know? and and so despite that it was the first proof of stake, and after that we we, we do that. No, in terms of the challenges for for us is like uh, obviously this is a very nascent market still. Is a small carbon carbon markets are like two billion market last year, which is not too big. It is evolving fast. It will be. Uh, we expect to be a, a several trillion market in the next three decades. Uh, so we are talking about probably 20, 30, 20 billion market, 20, 30 billion market. That's what the, the numbers we are talking about. I think blockchain is a perfect tool to, for, for bringing transparency to record transactions, but as well to generate new carbon credits that uh, eliminate barriers and eliminate costs. Of people having to go in field, so we know about digital MRBs now. That uh, we build a, one of the few, one of the first digital MRBs two years ago. We did the first transaction worldwide with in that case with, with solar because it was the easy the easiest use case to connect to a smart uh, to a smart meter. But but there are others that we are implementing with more complex uh, scenarios. But we keep introducing new technologies, not only blockchain. I think that this is a combination. No, when when we started, we created the climate change coalition. We co-founded with different entities the climate change coalition of the UN, uh, UNFCCC. There, we came across different companies that were doing different initiatives, not only carbon credits with and putting blockchain there, but AI, IoT, devices that that can bring all that data. And and as you were saying before, no. So I mean the major challenges are uh, I guess interoperability is important as well no is it, is that that's one topic that is important um I think that the advance of the industry the understanding as well of investors of uh, where this is heading right and uh, last year for example philanthropy only was 3% dedicated to to climate and and, and we are in the biggest street of our of our life, no, it's facing six massive massive extinction uh, in the next three decades. So we need to we need more capital that understands why they have to deploy that capital in the right place. You no, know? there are people already that understands it, and why technology is that important. You no, know? and the problem is that today we are fighting one blockchain against another to see who gets more market share because obviously they don't. They still don't have a business model very clear where to make money. There are many blockchains and no one of them makes money, right? So uh, this is also this is also something that that we need to see, you know. And then the system every time gets evolving, evolving, evolving. You know, we know how how uh, we moved from one proof of work to proof of stake, and then we came up with the stable coins. Then we came up now with physical assets. Uh, uh, crypto bad by, by by physical assets, which was obviously clear that was going to happen. So sometimes digital, this part is replicating the antique economical world in, with different names and different aspects. And right. so, but at the end, it's the same. No, when you go from the financial world, and like like I like Ives and like me, I think you come also from the financial world from the uh, Joyce the Super Bank. So uh, you, you you have there that 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 you see things happening that you were supposing that were going to happen, right? So it's evolution of the of the new digital economy on that side as well. But I think we're in the right track. No, the challenges mm. are like yes, putting more money at work there in the right places and and not in. in uh, we saw ninety percent, many many projects that failed because they didn't just make the homework, you know. So it is, yeah, that's, yeah. That's the thing. it is for sure uh, challenging things because it's not yet enforced by law fully, it's voluntary. So it is a particular world. We take a small break and we're going to be back soon uh, with Fran and Heinz to discuss the future that it is going to be in a green blockchain. 
at timepledge.org. We are building the largest free coaching and advisory platform for entrepreneurs by providing mentorship opportunities based on pledge time. Our network of seasoned industry experts acting as coaches is working for free, pledging their valued time to the next generation of entrepreneurs who will change everything. Our portfolio of sessions goes over every skill an entrepreneur needs to successfully launch his or her startup, from how to pitch and behave with investors to how to best market your idea online or even how to best manage your team. We have the perfect sessions with the perfect mentors. Want to learn how to become the best entrepreneur you can be or mentor the next generation of entrepreneurs in Africa and Asia? Please visit timepledge.org and let's get you started. Welcome back to Breaking Back Europe, episode 182. This is Roberto, your host, and we have here uh, Francisco and Heinz. There are two uh, very important people in the world of uh, uh, green blockchains, the use of blockchain for a world of uh, impact uh, and uh, climate. Uh, um, uh, how can I exactly? There is not a right way to say in one word. There are so many aspects that this uh, uh, approach gives uh, to, uh, you know, help, uh, uh, you know, solve impact. So where, where there is battery impact, we support where there is uh, uh, credits, carbon credits, uh, so like pollution. Uh, so there are so many aspects that uh, we can uh, we can work. And uh, as an investor in nature-based solution is a critical aspect of sustainable development. Uh, how is access in part facilitating the trend? To, to say one of the three many, and this trend in choosing uh, this initiative are implemented uh, responsibly. Yeah, so uh, I think it's interesting the, the, the taxonomy about what we are doing. And we started, of course, with the impact economy and um, there is many Different wording, and sometimes this wording is used as buzz. But we finalized uh, uh, by the word uh, regenerative by design, and uh, because we wanted to change also the system, not ourselves, but I think to promote to change the system, even the capitalistic system behind it. Because I think we have to use inside the planetary body new system, a new regenerative system inside where people are doing negative impact in a sense. It could be a, an, an area, a, a, a city, it could be a company or it could be increasing the net positive inside the boundary of a, of a, of a nature-based solution. When we are talking about uh, this nature-based solution, I think the, the private sector alone is, 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 is not ready to move completely fully in the nature-based solution because it's a more holistic approach. And we are multi-protocol, not only the carbon, there is many, many dimension of it. And, uh, and uh, the financing of that is not in the, in the spirit of a traditional finance, which like, the, the risk return impact as mentioning a trade off and an understanding very action about his investment in very short term. When we talk about this wicked problem on multi, we need a collective action on the private public partnership financing it. So one way to, to bring the, the trust inside this nature based solution is probably to have a new way of de risking this project by itself. And de risking is not just splitting two worlds, but integrating also the, as a stakeholder, the investor, the traditional investor inside it. And they're risking up to a certain point because if we can trump the risk premium inside the project because we have a, a better trust and, uh, and the blockchain gives this, uh, this this better trust of the outcome based solution, it can we can finance step by step this outcome based of a nature based solution. We can use blended finance, of course, but we can also use now we are in discussion with a with a regenerative uh, insurance, so we can bring not only to reduce the risk but also to bring inside the G curve of the regenerative, some positive insurance that allow people to, to take this risk. If we manage to move to that, even in, in a sandbox or, or maybe a prototype, a small area, then we can bring new investment finance like the green bond. And if we bring green bond of if everything linked more to the fixed income than the equity side, there is huge amount that is now doing green watching inside the secondary market that can be promoted. Uh, promoted from the, the secondary market directly in the equity world of the primary market, there is a fiduciary duty and there is probably some, some issue around it. There is some investor, of course, but not necessary when you move in natural-based solution and you include SDG or whatever. The, the financing gap is not the 2 billion, 80 billion of the Rondia carbon market. We are talking about trillion of dollars. 
So in a sense, and probably we need being going above the carbon silo if we want to keep the, the planetary boundary, because just the carbon, we probably bring some solution, but create more disorder elsewhere. So that's the financing gap, which must be larger, but of course the private sector is important, but alone it cannot. And we also have to define what is market-based and what is not market-based, because we cannot bring market-based on everything. Uh, it's a traditional way to do that, but I think for some, there is probably some non-market-based, a new measure of valuation about nature above a just market-based, especially when we talked before about offsetting, which is probably uh, so something if it's not done in the double integrity also from the company itself, there is a rebound effect and probably more negative impact behind it. So we have to be careful about offsetting market-based without a fully holistic view about the uh, impact. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's an interesting aspect because uh, I was uh, thinking how the general public, uh, when uh, we face uh, this aspect of uh, being uh, involved in uh, this problem of the carbon credit, we are usually really uh, the only thing I see is the request that there is when I buy an airplane ticket uh, to give give some money to help the airline company that is polluting like crazy <laughs> to pay back their. Uh, damage uh, practically and contribute in the sense. But uh, hardly when I go to the bank and I say, look, guys, I have $100,000 to invest. Somebody tells me, like, why don't you invest uh, in action to make, uh, you know, an impact? And uh, because where is my revenue? Where is the money that I make out of that? <laughs> so culturally, uh, people think, uh, well, these carbon credit things, this uh, impact on nature is just uh, an additional work and a demand that is given is put upon me. Okay, I need to change the light bulb in my house with uh, the one that consumes less. Uh, I need to flush the toilet less often uh, or other when. Uh, but uh, there is an actual economy where uh, I, people should be able to participate even with small amounts. And pro probably also here the blockchain will help uh, to invest into this aspect, not just because it's good for the plan, invest because it's a financial opportunity that uh, could be open to everybody. So this is probably something that uh, uh, has never been presented in simple terms to the average of on the road uh, to say, hey, look, you can also profit uh, from this. There is a, a beautiful analogy, if I think, uh, uh, I live in Bali, in Indonesia, which is a massive touristic island. And the farmer that had this piece of land next to the beach with a lot of sand in it, they were the poorest farmer of all, because uh, how can this land produce uh, a good, uh, uh, you know, like rice or other things? It's all uh, polluted with sand. Obviously, when tourists arrive, the piece of land is the most valuable to build an hotel. So these people suddenly became super rich. And with the world of carbon credit, there are countries that pollute zero, have huge pieces of nature, and they are so positive in the aspect that they can just resell uh, their credit. So they, they found themselves from having nothing to suddenly becoming very wealthy in something. And on the other hand, they are very useful for countries that pollute a lot and want to clean their consciousness just by purchasing this credit generating by somebody that was there, luckily, and, uh, and has. So the there are some strange effects that there are in all these economy that are generated. Uh, would this limit the actual action on doing something good for the climate? Because there are some resources that are just producing for free, if you want to say. Uh, you know, it seems it seems like really blockchain has another analogy here when uh, there were those forks. I bought a very beautiful early division just because people keep forking the Bitcoin blockchain and I found myself full of a, a coin from other things without doing anything special, right? Um, so let's start with France that uh, is, uh, is here, which is your take on this aspect? You know, like uh, this, uh, this generation, free generation of credits given just by being there by chance uh, for certain countries. Well, I mean, uh, that's exactly why I incepted this project, no? In, in, when I started with Climate Coin, uh, my, my initial idea was, we call the democratization of climate change, no? How everyone, not only citizens, but every part of the, the, the society, because this is a public and private solution, uh, can contribute to that. And especially what you just said, no? A small contributions that we do during our daily actions is especially what climate trade does. So basically we have a tool and 
I, I just want to explain you uh, not about my company, just, just because we do this exactly. No, um, basically, Climate Trade has an API, plug and play API, that the companies can go to the, our developers portal. They pick it up. They generate, uh, imagine, flights carbon neutral, hotels uh, staying carbon neutral, transportation. In fact, in Spain, the, the Cabify, which is like the Uber of Spain in Latin America, every ride that you take, we measure with our tools all the rides, the CO2 of the ride, and you are charged a fee per sustainability. We certify that in blockchain. We send you the certificate so you know that your money is, is doing some good, right? We thought on this because when I was flying 2018 to the COP uh, in Bonn, I got a Ryanair flight. I paid five euros for sustainability. I didn't know where my money went. I didn't know why it was five euros and not 3.5 or 4.5. And I didn't know which one was my carbon footprint. I said, hey, I need to turn it around, do it totally transparent and traceable. Because millions of or billions of contributions of small of citizens can generate a huge impact. So today we do that in a very much across sectors. We do, we, we have integrations with banks, with uh, transportation companies all around the world, more than 35 integration uh, success stories. Uh, even in payments, we have the brand Climate Pay. So in every payment you make with certain brands, we we, uh, we have a percentage that comes for, for, for paying some things. And regarding the, the your question, on the island and the, the specific credits for conservating something, that's the nature of carbon credits. I mean, the, the, the first problem that one of the first areas that are more uh, in, in, in risk of disappearing are the islands, right? Because of the level of the seas, no? So exactly these people can now survive and can generate another resources or can just conservate that, let's say, lungs that we need for the planet because they have other sources of income. So imagine in the future, probably what it will happen, what are you going to do with the oil and gas companies? Do you know, Do you think that they are going to leave by the hand that business? No way. So now they are moving all to carbon capturing and they are generating the biggest projects in the world of carbon capturing and generating carbon credits out of those projects. Or they are moving from pumping oil to renewables because they want to maintain their business, their level of business. So at the end, is like, why can't I close a oil on field and start generating carbon credits by the oil mm -hmm. I'm not pumping, right? So that's that's exactly what what the nature of carbon. At the end, a carbon credit is a matter of let's say funding or or, or amortizing, amorti I don't know how you say, of paying back, mm -hmm. amortizing the 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 project that you just invested. Because if you and I we go and we say, okay, let's plant a forest. Is our pocket putting the money? We putting the money out from our pockets. Unless we yeah. cut the boot, we don't have any go any any income there. So if we want this to 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 happen, it has to be a business as well for everyone. Because if it's not a business, it won't happen at the speed enough, right? All right, and that this is this is an incredible aspect of things because uh, you know like I have a Tesla, so every time I drive around, I should stop and collect my check, you know, for uh, non polluting with uh, with my car. But uh, in effect, is uh, is an opportunity open to everyone. Let's say I own uh, several hectares of land. You know, I say I want to plant trees. I can just say I plant trees. Or I can say I plant trees, and this is going to give me an income because I am doing something in the world of uh, impact. So the whole mechanics started voluntarily, right? And that's what is fascinating me. So there was no a government law that says, look, if you don't respect this measurement, you're going to be fined a lot of money, right? And at the same time, it's working, meaning that everybody's moving very fast to try to be into this game in a positive way or, uh, you know, contributing financially to cover up the damage that they do. How could this have taken place? It's just because of shame uh, that uh, that uh, big uh, industry, you know, put money in their pocket, you know, or take money out of their pocket uh, to be into this thing. Is the fact that as soon as it's going to be regulated, uh, uh, Ives, can you just shed a little bit of light on this? Because, you know, I think, not, like me, many other people are going to be wondering, 
why? Why companies that are so oriented in making money and they are just underpaying their employee and they're saving in the most, uh, they are actually moving so for the image for, uh, because they look good to the public uh, or because there is some other good reason for them to do it? Well, um, when, when we are now, because there is a regulated, if you assume just a carbon at the beginning, there is this kind of regulated market with a probably some issue around it, and there is this voluntary carbon market, which probably is very important because it should open other solutions of the carbon, more holistic, more nature-based solution, more conservation, and on, 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 on financing completely different what the, what the regulated market can do. I think one of the issues behind it is the impact accounting anyway. I think even at the corporate level, we have to change also the impact accounting by the company itself. There is some the UE Green Deal taxonomy, double materialities, they try, but it's still inside a very shareholder view even if they increase gradually to some stakeholders. So in a sense, there is for some good reasons, for some bad reasons, I want to offset to keep the same system. Um, and, and when people are are moving inside the more local unit of, 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 of people, I think it is becoming interesting interesting how we can bring this impact unit at the, at the human level. And the, we are now in discussion for for two habitats. One is to, to create a new area with, with integrating regenerative architecture in it. And what we try to achieve is calculate the impact, residual impact, multi-protocol, not only carbon, at the unit of the human living inside this habitat. And the other part of the world, there is a pro pro protection of forest, conservation of forest in Amazonia. And it's another project. It's not our project. It's a two projects for the same owner of the project. It's big, compact, big uh, actor behind. And we have to, to measure and to, to create the net positive for this one. And then what the delta of remaining, it's a, it's a, it's a twin. So they can exchange some impact and the investor can finance both sides. So in a sense, it's the first level of integrating two people. So you need of people in, the, in exchange, and, and, and it changes the minimum amount, which is the delta of both sides outside the boundary of the project itself. Because many of the impact will be generated and kept inside the area. Maybe in in, in, a, in, a, in Amazonia, they will have many positive impact, but for themselves, education, uh, water, some will be exchanged like a new monetary system. And you can bring NFT or whatever inside this impact unit, because in a sense, it's a new, what you exchange is a delta of two impact of two habitat, but you can expand that to many things. So in a sense, but we have to measure. Corporate for the time being is our more leverage point because they are especially the more emitters and probably we have first to reduce, avoid, and then they can try to bring some regenerative thinking and offsetting could be one way, but is not residual inside the, all this process. But at the level of, uh, of the people, like it's, it's becoming interesting. I think it's a little too early, uh, but of okay. course, uh, we are in the distributed by design, but when we will move it more decentralization fully, there is time for us, but I think there is still time of development interoperability, but I think how we measure impact unit as a, as a, as a pixel level or as a unit level, and how we, we can exchange the delta after a strong regenerative way of creating value inside this, this local context base and exchanges what's missing. You can just do it by a corporate on the forest on carbon trade, but you can go much larger in terms of what does that mean an impact inside the verticality of the impact and the horizontality of the impact inside an area. And I think it's a, it could be the future. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think in effect uh, is a three-dimensional space to expand to, right? Uh, and uh, Francisco, how, how do you see the, the future of this thing? Um, like uh, how the involvement of the bigger public uh, exactly like uh, it was explaining, like in terms of the corporation rather than uh, single people uh, in participating in all these mechanics. Because being already a blockchain, being already so technological, IoT rather than uh, many other things, uh, why there is not this app I can download from uh, the app stores that uh, help me work through my, uh, you know, uh, daily life and the, the, the impact I make and the choices I make and I save uh, at the end of the month 20 euros for my well good behavior that is actually measured in a certain way. Um, tell me your, your, your feeling, your vision uh, on these uh, possibilities for the future. Well, this is changing constantly. 
I see that the governments are going to get a bit time as well, more involved in, in things, uh, taxations and, 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 and as well in the different in the different parts, I, I, even to, to citizens. No, like, for example, in the in, in New York, every food that the, the waste of the restaurants, uh, you, you make a fine, you get a fine if you if you throw it to the garbage. No, you have to they pick up the the food. They, they do compost in the city for the farmers, which is a great solution. Right. If the, if you throw it out, you get a fine. So that's something that every time we will get more circular, we have to, you know. And and um, that's for me. That's that's the way to go. It will take time because, but every time there are, there are countries that are leading the force, there are regulations that are coming, and at the end, the companies understand that they have to get anticipated as well. No, I remember the other day. Uh, it's a basic example, but uh, I remember when Nike was uh, about to. They lost like I don't know how many percentage of sales because they were losing. They were using uh, kids labor, no. And then it they, it, it, it came up and they 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 lost more money whenever that came up. That the money that they saved by by using kids labor, no. This is same thing, no. The other day I was and I put you an example. I was running with Nike shoes and then now i'm running with adidas shoes because they have same design they use plastic from the ocean and they are very comfortable i switched brands because there was more comfortable with the other ones and it's still and it's, and, and and then they were using more plastic ethical. no so more ethical so i think i think that we are all moving the mindsets are changing the young people the, the un is is very 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 at the same time worried and focused on kids and young generations because they have it in the DNA, right? They know, hey guys, you have, you are the guys that decide, but we come after, and soon we will be voting, right? So these people have it in the DNA. So I think it's going to be changing fast. It's not as easy as saying, hey, I, I have a, a more efficient light bulbs and I can make money out of that because all of that we ha we have, all of us we have a carbon foot, our own carbon footprint. So we are talking about reductions. I mean, the interconnection between all the variables is so complicated to have that uh, to get a, 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 a that network uh, connected. Okay, it will take a lot of time. Like people has their own private initiatives. Everyone wants to be the most sustainable. They want to put their their mm -hmm. the tag. Hey, I'm the most sustainable company in the world. You know, but not because mm -hmm. they generate that impact. But some some of them do, but others because. They just want to seem like the most sustainable and sell yeah, more, yeah. no? Whenever we pass to uh, know that this is for purpose for real, and that uh, the money we don't take the money to uh, we don't take the money to the next level, right? So, I mean, at the end, when you pass that part that you say, "Hey, this is this is uh, about for real, about purpose," no? Like the B Corp companies or like the the B Corp movement that was created for these people that sold his co their company and saw and saw how all what they created that was very yeah. ethical was dismantled by the yeah. company that bought it. They said, "I need a movement that the companies are by purpose here." No, you saw it the other day with Patagonia, the the founder that gave the money away for uh, the the company is now in hands of generating impact the, all the profits of that company so that's what i'm talking about i don't mean yeah. dedicating all to that but but it is important that what we do generate that positive impact at scale because we don't have too much time to yeah. to uh, uh, i would say a bad word but, right. but you know uh, so, so yeah I, I guess for you that, uh, and I understand this, the education is a very important aspect of it. I mean, the impact of the educating kids on green studies, if you want. Uh, my kids in Bali went to school called Green School, that great green leaders. Uh, so it's really all focused on this aspect. And for as much as they are regular teenagers, they stay on the cell phone and uh, they don't really have this interaction. But they have the basis, the, the boys down there, and for sure, their choices in the future are put on this ethic aspect of uh, how company respect, uh, you know, hurt and humans uh, yeah. in the general term. Uh, if then yeah, we're gonna close. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I just in one minute, I think it's important uh, inside of the the capitalistic world where we are. In a sense, when we mm. move sustainability. It's not working because it's prone to this kind of rebound effect on greenwashing. When we move to the circularity, we have done half past. When we move to the regenerative model, 
it will be complete. It will be a symbiotic economy. But that it change the model, model mental on every everything behind it. So it will take time. So okay. if we assume that there is a transition, I think we have to place the focus on the transition, and it will be different for different people. Some people will lose, some people will win, but globally there will be in the G curve. And I think we know that there is a misallocation of resources, and massively a debasement of currency massively. So there is a money. I think what now to have to force is to bring this this transition to this regenerative world and see how we can bring this solution. Because I think if we don't move inside the decor, people will refuse to eat it because it takes time and they will lose and people are in a popularization. So in a sense, it's difficult this transition. So we have to focus now to, to reduce this transition to this regenerative world. Because otherwise we will stay, we see even the circular is a good way, it's probably not enough. I agree. And it's interesting that in 45 minutes, our beautiful and very insightful conversation, we didn't mention Greta one single time, which is a, a Ooh, great cool. accomplishment. <laughs> Greta, who <Ooh>, correct. <laughs> and uh, oh, thank you again for being uh, with me uh, at Breaking Back Europe, episode 182. I look forward to talk to you guys one more time in the future. It has been a pleasant chat. Thank you very much. Thank you, boss. Likewise, Roberto. Thank you so much. Nice thank to meet you, you Ives. Nice, nice to meet you. Well. Bye. Thanks for listening to Breaking Banks Europe, a Provoke Media podcast in cooperation with Fintech Stage. Don't forget to tweet us out, shout out, or post to the team at Breaking Banks EU on Twitter. If there's something or someone you'd like to hear on our cast, let us know. See you next week on Breaking Banks Europe.